This Week in Destiny! September 19, 2024. This Week in Destiny, we have been playing Iron Banner and finished tons of triumphs and challenges from episode Echoes. So now we are ready to start sharing more about what's to come with episode Revenant. Our next content drop arriving on October 8th. Are you ready for it? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. New dev insight next week. Uh, improved rewards for Nightfalls and Lost Sectors. Uh, let's talk about Power Band increase. Uh, a preview for the next big abilities update. Uh, the nerf Ace of Spades. Uh, Blaster Early Access. Our first art show. Bungie Foundation at TwitchCon. Nice. Chill with us in orbit. All right, let's get, with, let's get on to it. Uh, we've already heard about Codename Frontiers. Uh, save the date uh, for next week's Dev Insight. When are we doing it? September 25th, we'll have a new article delivered directly by the Destiny 2 developers and focused on answering some questions. You all have about Codename Frontiers. Patience is a virtue. So for now, visit the uh, our Hub article and give our previous three articles a read. So I assume they're doing a... a uh, they probably do it live, I would assume. Hopefully, we'll see. Upcoming rewards changes. Uh, let's talk about some of the changes for coming up with episode Revenant, uh, which is launching October 8th. Economy team. Okay, so we got some economy team stuff focused on Nightfalls and Lost Sectors. First, the drop chances for non adept weapons have been increased in Advanced Expert and Master Nightfalls when earning Platinum and Gold tier upon completion. We don't care. We do GMs anyway. If you need a GM help, make sure you swing by the Discord, man, because we don't need this to be upgraded. We guarantee that you get your Adept drop every time. This is irrelevant to us. Irrelevant, dude. We're getting Adept weapon drops from Grandmaster Nightfalls. Adept weapon drops from Grandmaster Nightfalls have been slightly increased when getting Gold completions, although Platinum remains the best course of action for earning them as completion guarantees drop that's what we do we kill all the champs and we get a guaranteed drop anyway forget about what you just heard up there come by the twitch come by uh over in the discord let's get you a guaranteed drop by running this thing on platinum it's not hard uh nightfall focusing zavala's focus decoding has also received a minor update in regard to nightfall weapons the weekly feature nightfall weapon and the adept version of said weapon have to have been moved to a new featured category with updated costs okay weekly featured nightfall weapon one vanguard ingram one nightfall cypher that's actually a huge swing in economy that's an insane swing in economy wasn't it 10 nightfall cyphers before that's oh no 10 nightfall cyphers for the adept weapon okay i was about to i was about to freak out dude i was about to freak out all right so one vanguard ingram instead of three uh 50 000, uh glimmer that's new and then still the 10 Nightfall Cyphers. This is what costs the most, and this is the hardest to get. I run Nightfalls all the time. The 10 Nightfall Cyphers is still hard to obtain, even if you're doing uh, Nightfalls consistently. What's the Discord? It's in the profile. Fear fit. You know this. Uh, Lost Sector Rewards. It's just the weapons updates and stuff like that for the groups and everything. Not that big of a deal for Revenant, honestly. Uh, power ban increasing in the next episode. This is going to be huge. Okay, so now our power floor is still 1900. Wait, starting with October 8 with Revenant, we'll once more be increasing the power caps by 10. Pretty much irrelevant. I'm just going to throw that out there. Pretty much irrelevant. Like, up by 10? You just have to do the pinnacle? That's it? I'm good on that. There, there's really... That's that's nothing new. That's... that. It might as well have just stayed the same. It honestly might as well have just stayed the same. Yeah, but I think they're... I think they're decreasing us to the power cap and making us do the pinnacle cap again. It said the... We'll once more be increasing power caps by 10 to return that pursuit to in-game players. I don't understand, dude. Like, I really don't understand. That, I don't, I don't understand what y'all are doing. I really don't. Uh, that's, this is whatever. This is honestly not even news. Uh, <laughs> Titans Week in Destiny, okay? Let's, last but not least, our Sandbox team has a hefty update on abilities with a focus on Titans. But remember, all our Guardians are perfect and equally loved. Shut up. You hate hunters. Stop. I don't know why you're lying to everybody. I don't know why you're lying to everybody. Uh, combat gameplay team here with a preview of what to expect with the launch of Revenant. It's been a minute since uh, our last article back in May. And since then, we've seen the launch of the Prismatic subclasses, which seismically shifted the sandbox landscape. Okay, yeah, Titans kind of got shafted in the sandbox there. I, can, I can't agree with that. From multiple Warlock buddies to Diamond Lances... As far as the eye can see, we've been extremely pleased to watch players push Prismatic to its limits as they combine gameplay atoms in ways that weren't possible before the final shape. Now the Prismatic subclasses 
have had time to settle, we're making some adjustments. We've collected a mixture of player feedback and game data about abilities across the sandbox, and we and we have a slew that we missed an A right there of ability changes coming for both prismatic and non-prismatic subclasses alike. We'll cover most of this season's ability changes in this write-up, but you can see the full patch notes when Revenant launches. Okay, today we're gonna focus on Titan's class identity reinforcement, uh, super ability changes, general ability tuning, unbreakable will. Titans are the bulwarks of the fire team. They live and die on the front line of battle, barking out orders. Y'all order me around one time, see what happens. See what happens, man. I swear to God, dude. I swear to God. Never backing down from an encounter. Titans wield defensive staples like barricade and stasis crystals and dueling out life-saving buffs like void overshield, woven mail to their grateful fire teams. I'm never grateful whenever you guys give me that. I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. And they throw a mean right hook to boot. But Titans deserve a class identity that's more than the sum of its fists. We get it. You guys are buffing Titans. Titan barricade now taunts... Oh, we got a taunt for the Titans. They're making this more like an MMO. I really think that this is a great thing for Destiny to do. I, they need to make it more like a standard MMO where your tank is actually taunting enemies, where you're actually consuming aggro for your team. That's huge, actually. That makes the Titan tank class a Titan tank. I love that. So your Titan barricade now taunts enemies in front of the barricade. This taunt only occurs while there is a player standing behind the barricade. That's very cool. Substantial change for Titans in Destiny 2. Uh, for the first time, Titan players can use their defensive abilities to draw enemy fire, thereby shielding their fire team from harm. That's huge. Uh, to support the Titans' new aggro lifestyle, we've made some adjustments to barricades and unbreakable. Towering barricade and rally barricade, all subclasses. Uh, re reduced non-boss combatant damage dealt to the barricade by 50%. Non-boss combatant damage reduced by 50%. That thing is going to be a freaking beast to get down by the ads. Increased splash damage reduction from combatants for players behind the barricade from 20% to 60%. This is a beefy tank update. Barricades now grant moderate damage resistance versus combatants during cast animation that's huge this 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 makes this towering barricade and rally barricade very cool that's very cool it, i mean it makes you more tanky it makes it more of like a true to form mmo which destiny in all rights is a fps mmo looter shooter style game so if you're gonna make your tank take aggro you're making it more like an mmo i agree with the change i agree with the change unbreakable damage blocked by unbreakable now generates grenade energy huge that's really cool Increased max duration the shield can be held. Forward movement speed now slows down briefly when the shield is shot. Reduced unbreakables throw attack damage versus players by 20%. So we're reducing the damage. We're making them more beefy, but reducing the damage. They're a tank. They're supposed to be tanky. They're not supposed to one-shot everything. <laughs> They're not a glass cannon. Increased damage bleed uh, through from players by 15%. Fully charged unbreakable attacks will now one-shot barricades in PvP, except when the barricade is under the effects of Heart of Inmost Light. I like all of this. I still like all of this, but this right here, this is awesome. The barricades, the aggro from the barricades, like that is, this is awesome. I like this. I can't wait to see how this plays in the game. All right, we're getting a Void Overshield change too. Increase Void Overshield PvE damage resistance from 50 to 70 percent this is huge is this just for titans no this is this is just void overshield so if this counts for everybody a void overshield is super cool i love i love a void hunter so i hope this is good i hope this is good for everybody uh prismatic titan huge let's get some changes to prismatic uh consecration scorch and slam waves now shatter stasis crystals diamond lance thrown or slam diamond lances will now shatter stasis crystals they should have from the beginning uh, slamming a diamond lance will grant you and nearby allies two stacks of frost armor. Huge. They're making everything the Titan does tanky. I want that. I need that. It's so good. Change the weapon tray hood to display how many seconds are remaining before the diamond, uh, the diamond lance disappears like a tangle. W. Knockout. Melee kills now cancel health and shield stun uh, in addition to healing, allowing you to immediately start regenerating. Note, this is a revert from... Yeah, I was about to say, it just it didn't it do that. Uh, Shiver Strike now attaches a stasis explosive to the target on impact. This detonation slows players and freezes combatants. Now refunds 80% of melee energy on whiff. Okay. 
Increased energy, I mean, if you're missing your shots, I guess that's good, but we don't miss over here, you know what I'm saying? Increased energy recharge rate by 12.5%. Immediately after landing, Shiver Strike attack. The attacker's melee ability is now suppressed for 0.5 seconds. While not specifically a prismatic titan only option, we know they felt like, or we, they felt the nerf most when facet of commands cooldown was moved from 11 seconds. We agree that 11 seconds feels too long. Passive command is uh, cooled down from 11 seconds to 4 seconds. Why the drastic changes? You know what I'm saying? I feel like 11 seconds is too long, but why do we go from one end of the spectrum to the other? Like, we should tune. We shouldn't We shouldn't do massive adjustments like that. We should tune. Uh, Titan Unpowered Melee. Increase the damage against players by 5%. Increase damage against PvE combatants by 20%. Uh, increase the stun multiplier. This is cool. Uh, I feel like your Titan Punch is just still going to do crazy damage, even if it's not charged melee, so that's pretty cool. Uh, honestly, at the end of the day, huge updates for Titans. Uh, Warlock Storm Trance, increased damage resistance from 53% to 58%, not that much of an update. Uh, Chaos Reach, increased damage resistance from 45% to 55%, fixed an issue where Chaos Reach did not jolt at high frame rates, fixed an issue where Chaos Reach would not go through Sentinel Shield Guard or a Sentinel's Barricade. Nova Warp, increased PvE damage by 20%, increased damage resistance from 51 to 58 uh the increased damage is cool but i mean who's really using nova warp like that you know what i'm saying uh oh hunters we got uh golden gun marksman and deadshot increased damage against base elite and mini bosses combatants by 30 percent let's go dude we love a 30 percent damage buff on the deadshot dude and marksman let's go man vector blades nobody uses those increased pve damage by 20 percent Got it, cool. Not bosses, you are correct. They hate hunters, they do though. Not bosses, just base, elite, and mini bosses. They hate us. I changed my mind, they hate us. Let us do more damage against the boss, you know what I'm saying? We are the glass cannon, let us cook! Please! Whatever, dude. Anyways, and this is not, this has nothing to do with still hunt too, by the way. This is literally just, just that, just that bad boy right there. Doesn't say champs, Ch champs are technically mini bosses. They're yellow bars, but not named. You do enough damage already, there is a Titan that out damages me on Herald when I'm when I'm using Still Hunt and a grenade launcher. That should not happen when I'm hitting my shots and cooking. That shouldn't happen, okay? Don't talk to me about we do enough damage already. We don't. We are supposed to be the glass cannon of the game. They're making Titans tanks make us the glass cannon. Titan Glacial Quake. How the storm can be used while Glacial Quake is active. Twilight Arsenal. Thrown axe projectiles now more consistently track towards targets. Closer to the reticle, increased Twilight Arsenal Axe Relic weapon damage versus combatants by 23%. So this is after you pick up the Axe Relic weapon damage. All right, this is not the super itself. Whenever you pick up the Relic weapon, it's doing 23% more damage. Uh, Thunder Crash, increased base detonation damage by 33%. This is huge, Thunder Crash. That's, that's, all, that's across the board, 33% more whenever you're landing that hit. That's actually huge for Titans. So they're going to let the Titans cook even more percentage on a heavy damage super than the Hunters against everything but not Hunters. I'm just saying. Just saying. Just throwing that out there. Fist of Havoc increased damage resistance from 51 to 58%. Changed how the light attack works under the hood to improve uh, consistency in hitting targets. Slightly increased light attack, lunge, range, and ability to target enemies vertically. Uh, for Act 2, we're investigating increasing roaming super uptime, so they're more often available when you need them. Stay tuned for that. Combination blow. Rescaled heal healing from a flat 80 health per kill to... Oh, you can stack it. Okay. No longer clears health and shield stun on kill. Remove 1.5 second internal cooldown on healing. Okay. That's all the combat gameplay team has to share today. We're hard at work for future releases, uh, and we're more optimistic than ever about how the f future of Destiny and its sandbox. Uh, we're excited to take big swings, make dramatic changes, and deliver new innovations. They, they're, they're, not, they're not lying about the dramatic changes. Sometimes they'd be going too far. Uh, in the short term, we hope you're looking forward to Revenant as much as we are. Okay, early access for the uh, new... Ace of Spades nerf gun. Uh, we have an art show for Destiny. This is very cool. I like that. All this art on display is very cool. Uh, Bungie Foundation at TwitchCon. Nice. Bounty for good. Nice little emblem. Got a bunch of cool stuff. All right, cool. Uh, that does it for the Twit. A lot of stuff being updated. Titans are going to be uh, more and more broken because you know why not. And they're going to give uh, Hunters a slight nerf because Bungie hates us. 
That does for this week's Twid. If you enjoyed the video or found it informative, make sure you like, comment, share it with a friend, follow, and subscribe depending on which platform you're on. And we'll see you in the next one.